Hello ladies and gentlemen, Marauder X here with the video of a bunch of stuff to cover on this one. First off, I wanted to say I apologize for not having any videos go up this week. Um, I've spent the last several days uh, tinkering with things and as such it's made it very difficult for me to actually record and put out content considering the things I'm tinkering with. Um, two big things. I'm making everything wireless. Everything wireless. Um, the first thing that I've done wireless, which is impacting my recording setup, is uh, turning my wired headphones. These are are wired. They were wired. In fact, you might be able to see. Um, they've got, you know, uh, a... Uh, I don't remember the name of that input jack. It's It's the... It's the large one, used for actual instruments, electric instruments, uh, amps and things and such. And then uh, the, the 3.5 on one side. These are not really expensive headphones, they really aren't, but I like them. And I got tired of trying to find headphones online because all the Bluetooth wireless ones have mics built in, and I didn't need that because of one of the other things that I was ordering. So I found a way to make this wireless. I bought this little device. The Impow Bluetooth wireless transmitter, and it's got, it came with it, so it's basically this, and then I ordered this cable, and what it does is I, I attached a little command strip thing to it, so that I can pop it on there, plug in the 3.5 millimeter adapter, and now it is wireless headphones. But stick with me, my story gets better. So in addition to that, I also have this. It's currently charging. I'm gonna pop it off the charger. I have this wonderful little device. The Mod Mic Wireless. Um, I really got tired of my setup uh, having a wire because uh, basically what was happening was I would just constantly get like a dog on a leash just kind of yanked uh, because I had my old headset had two cables to it. It had the cable for the headset and it had the cable for the mod mic and both of which were plugged into the back of my computer which is, was not a real issue before I changed to this game room. Uh, in the other game room where my computer was on the other side it seemed like it was a lot closer to where I actually was sitting so there wasn't a, as much of a problem being corded to the back of the PC. But having to shift things, it seems like it is considerably farther, and I've lost, you know, a good six to eight inches. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> God, please, I hope that's not what she said. That would be terrible losing. Anyway, um, so it, it was really uncomfortable trying to record with it, so I, I, I saw that a new mod mic came out, a wireless one. It is Bluetooth. Here's the the, the box that it came in. I haven't gotten a chance to try it out yet, but uh, given the fact that I've been using the Mod Mic 5 for a while now, I'm really not concerned about the quality. Um, I did a bunch of research on it before I dropped the cash on it, because it is not a cheap thing, and it's about $120. You can find it for a little bit cheaper, depending on where you, like, there are deals to be had. Um, so I, I did that. Got it, it's currently charging, and I'm gonna get that set up. I, I did have to buy a another like a USB Bluetooth adapter for this for the PC, because my desktop does not have Bluetooth native. It says it supports it, but it doesn't have any sort of built-in Bluetooth. I had to get another little receiver for that. A little obnoxious. But the fact that it has cleared off so much space on my desk, I don't have cables, I don't have to worry about having, I had to have boxes set up. I have this wonderful little stand for my my headset, and I had to have that on boxes elevated because having the, the cable for this stick out, because it's, this side is heavy duty cable. Uh, it stuck out about yay far, so you couldn't have it set there because otherwise it would just kind of get in the way of everything. So I, I had to have boxes up so that there was clearance for the cable to, to hang where it needed to hang without causing any sort of problems. It was just, it was 
obnoxious. But with that, my desk is cleared off. I have so much space for activities. It's great. Which leads me into the second thing I did. Um, and this is, this is going to be fun for all of you Sega Saturn fans out there. So, I have right now the world's coolest Sega Saturn. I have the Rhea built in, uh, which I've, I've shown off. I'm, I'll take pictures of and I'll post it here of what the Rhea is. Basically, it is a device that removes the CD drive from the Saturn and replaces it with a, a new circuit board that has an SD reader, an SD card reader built in so that you can play your games off of an SD card. It's great. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to get hold of. I've made a lot of comments about it before. Like, it's it's not that easy to get a hold of. The person who makes it does it as a hobby. It's not it's not fun to have to, to jump through the hoops, or it's not fun to have to spend a ridiculous amount of money to get that through a reseller, because there's always someone on eBay reselling them for ridiculous amounts of money. Ask me how I know. Uh, so I have that, and I thought, why stop there? And now I have this. This is a custom wireless Sega Saturn controller. Now it's custom on so many ways because I actually, this was a Japanese controller that uh, was given to me uh, by Libet for Christmas a couple years ago, and I custom painted it. Um, I wanted to keep the the buttons the same colors, but I wanted to change, it uh, was a drastically different color plastic. Uh, it wasn't one of the white ones, I didn't, I didn't spray paint one of the white ones, but they had a, like, light gray that had these button configurations, and I just, I didn't like that color, so I custom spray painted it. I didn't have to lose the Sega logo here, which kind of sucks, but there is a seller on, uh, I don't, I call it Yo-Yo Kart, but that's not actually the name because there's not a second O. It's Yo-Yo Kart, Y-O-Y Kart. It's a, it's a Chinese reselling site, basically. And uh, there's a, a person on that site who sells 2.4 gigahertz wireless modified Saturn control boards. That's awesome. Uh, it takes a lot of tinkering to deal with. It used to be just one set, you'd get the receiver and the board, and as one thing, it was like, it used to be like 60 bucks, and now they're selling them separately, and it comes out to be more than 60 bucks, um, including shipping. Um, so, uh, this is the new, uh, adapter that they have for it. This plugs in to your Saturn, and this is the receiver for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, controller. And there is there is some tinkering that you have to do with this board. You, uh, the board does not have the L and R triggers on it. You have to actually either order replacement trigger connectors and solder them on yourself, or you have to take another controller board, desolder the L and R from that and resolder it onto the wireless, which I did, because uh, I had a broken controller that I'm like, you know, screw it. It's, the the cable was just shot, and I didn't, like, I, I'm not great at soldering, so I didn't feel that I could repair it easily, so I said, screw it. I'm gonna, I took the, the LNR uh, triggers off of that, soldered it onto this board, and now I have a custom wireless Sega Saturn controller to go with the receiver, so I have a wireless Sega controller now. Now, I, I say that this is fun for two reasons. One, it's really neat. Um, it's 2.4 gigahertz uh, for this, so it, it does add more to the, the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth. Um, it, it is just cluttering up that signal. It's not as fun as, say, Bluetooth, um, but it's fun because, you know, it's it's mechanical tinkering. I've, I have no experience soldering. Um, I have a little bit of experience with desolder, but uh, it's it's really badass uh, because of how how much fun it is just to to do that little tinkering. Um, I probably sound like a complete idiot to people who have so much experience on this computer, uh, but this is actually uh, the world's best Sega Saturn Model One. 
uh, in about a year's time, it's going to be a lot better for Saturn owners to make this current setup that I have so much easier. And it's going to be so much less work to do. Uh, so uh, a person named Dr. Abrasive, or Professor Abrasive, Professor Abrasive, he is a professor, not a doctor. Gotta get the, the titles right. Uh, he's currently working on a device called the Satiator, which is a device that plugs into the back of the Sega Saturn uh, where the uh, the CR2032 battery is. There's a slot there that uh, was never used in North America, but in uh, Japan was used for a uh, VC, VCD card uh, decoder, which was just a little MPEG-2 decoder that allowed you to play video CDs on the Saturn, which is really neat, something I always kind of wanted to get involved with. I had a couple of VCDs from an anime con convention years ago, but the cards themselves since they were only released in Japan, are a little pricey, so I never got around to it. But his device is a USB or SD reader. I'm not entirely sure what format he's going with. Um, I haven't checked on some of the updates since uh, the initial announcement. It's a little foggy on that, but the device is just going to plug and play there, much like an EverDrive. And it is going to be a way to play games off of uh, a secondary media card, much like the 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 Rhea or Phoebe, but it does not require you to have to remove the optical drive. Um, how it's supposed to work is if there's not a disc in your disc drive, it it just runs a boot sequence. The system will go, okay, boot from the disc first. If there's no disc, boot from the, the satiator next. Go to the, the SD card. I'm, I'm assuming it's an SD card. I don't know. But, uh, It'll load from that, and it'll have a. Uh, he's working on a menu system so that you can just load games onto that, much like the Rhea or Phoebe, and that's so much easier because that is literally a plug-and-play option. Also, uh, Professor Abrasive is doing this as a means of getting this production unit out there, whereas the person who makes the Rhea and Phoebe units does it as a hobby, not as a not as a means of. Uh, you know, preserving gaming history, not as a means of providing, you know, hardware. It, it, it's, they're doing it because they, they like making these boards and they don't really care because they're getting money out of it. Like, it's, it's not a business model for whatever reason. Um, but Professor Embrace is turning it into a, 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 a model of making it easier for Saturn owners to have access to this type of technology. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. So that's a plug-and-play option for that. And then uh, Retrobit is working on wireless controllers. Now, I did a video about it prior to talking about it, and I was a little apprehensive about it because I didn't know how it was coming out. They had a, There was a leak of an image that showed the Bluetooth controllers weren't going to be the default Saturn controller. They were going to be a Saturn-style controller, but with two analog sticks. I really didn't like that design. I just wanted a stock Saturn controller. But now it looks like they're going to have a stock Saturn controller and the the one with the thumbsticks. And it looks like there's going to be a 2.4 gigahertz wireless as well as a Bluetooth. There seems to be a lot of back and forth over what is going to be available that they're going to be able to make. Um, but regardless, if they had a stock Saturn controller, which it looks like they're... they're they're going to have because they have shown off a stock Saturn style that is wireless in some way at CES this year, um, which was I think a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago. They showed that there was going to be a stock version of this. So you can now have, you know, in about a year's time, give or take, depending on how long it takes for Professor Abrasive and Retrobit to get both of these pieces of technology out there, um, Saturn owners are going to be able to have basically what I currently have, which I think is the world's coolest Sega Saturn. It does not require discs. It has a wireless controller. It's, it's that there's a, a, just a level of comfort being able to play those games on the actual hardware because I have I have started tinkering with Saturn emulation. It is far better than what it was, but there are still some some hiccups here and there that make me really hesitant to jump fully on board with that as a means of like if I wanted to record Saturn footage, I'm not going to jump fully into. Uh, 
uh, Saturn emulation for that because there still are some audio or graphical issues that are like, I'm uncomfortable with that. Um, but playing it on the hardware, this, this is an awesome setup. I'm really excited for this setup. I'm really excited for my my audio setup. I like, literally, it's just, it's just two pieces of technology and it it gives me so much more freedom. <laughs> I love it. Like I can, I can get up from my desk without having to take my headset off. I can go get a drink. I can come back. I don't have to worry about. Oh, okay, let's take the headset off. Get up, the headset back on. Make sure I didn't mess up any of the wires. And how my, my, uh, my mouse is. The wire was always either smacking into one side of the mouse, or I had to have it flip over to the other side, which meant I had to, I had to reach over my. Uh, Cable, because the cable is coming on. It's like, I had to reach over the cable to make sure, and then sometimes I'd kind of drop my arm down and just kind of sit up just a little bit, which would yank on it, and that was obnoxious. So obnoxious. So yeah, I am super excited right now about having so much wireless technology. I don't know why, but this is what I've been working on the last week, which is why I haven't really had a lot of time or energy or... I haven't put nearly enough effort into recording like I should. Um, hopefully now that I'm done with all this, I have to do a couple of test recordings with the mod mic, uh, but all of the actual tinkering, all of the setup and uh, tear down, everything is done. So I should be able to get back to recording rather quickly, and I might pick up just a, a, a quick Saturn game just to start recording this with this, because this is so nice. This is one of my favorite controller setups ever made and it is just so nice now to have this wirelessly i tried playing Mega Man x4 on it to see is there any noticeable lag and there was nothing like i was able to play it just as though i was uh, just as though i i'd been playing it with a wired controller like i'm the only thing that would be better is if there could be a wireless version of the 3d control pad uh, that was bundled with Nights into Dreams. It's the only thing that could be better about this. So, yeah, I'm gonna put this video up and basically this be my half-assed, I'm sorry for not recording anything, uh, means of, 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 you know, trying to make up that, hey, I did, I've done neat tech stuff. Please don't kill me for not putting up actual video content this week. Um, but it'll, it'll, it'll go back to normal, I promise. Uh, there will be more more regular content, but in the meantime, I've got so much fun stuff. This is so neat. I love it. Um, uh, I will post links to just about everything I can, all of the, the Saturn pieces, all of the headset pieces that I did. Uh, I will post links to all of that. I'll, post, I'll try to post some pictures of everything. That way you can see everything that's been done. Uh, if you will want to try to make either a wireless controller set up yourself, you don't want to wait for the retrobit stuff, or if you've got a, a nice pair of wireless headphones that you're like, ah, or wired headphones that you want to make wireless, or if you have a wired headset and you want a better mic for it, um, I'll have that. So yeah, um, check it out. So uh, links and everything in the description. So yeah, I will see you in the next video that I do. Hopefully it will be actual video content and not just me being like, look at my new stuff. Um, so yeah. Till then, later everyone.